Hi again, it's Dr. Jamnadis from Cardiovascular Interventions. And today I have a very important topic. And this topic is your incomplete cardiac examination. So the question is, why would you get an incomplete cardiac examination? Well, unfortunately, most people are getting an incomplete cardiac evaluation because things have evolved so much, but we still do things the old fashioned way. Most people go to the doctor's office saying, hey, I need to be checked out from cardiology to make sure I'm not gonna get a heart attack or I don't already have heart disease or congestive heart failure or valve problem. But in fact, the workup that they're getting is completely incomplete. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. So before I get into that, there's a few things you need to understand. Number one, most heart attacks are silent. What does that mean? That means a patient doesn't even know they're having a heart attack or they have atypical symptoms. They may just have a little bit of indigestion, a little bit of heartburn, some dizziness, maybe some sweating and uh, shortness of breath. And actually that was a heart attack. So they get missed. So the first thing is that symptoms where the elephant comes and sits on your chest and you're getting chest pain, that's the minority. Don't think that, oh yeah, I'm gonna get a warning and this is gonna happen. No, most heart attacks occur with no warning. They just happen. So that should really be a very scary point. That's number one. So myocardial infarctions don't come with a warning ahead of time. Number two, ischemia. Ischemia means lack of circulation. Let's say you have a blockage in one of your arteries. Most ischemia is silent. What does that mean? That means you don't even know that you have a blockage. That means you can walk up the stairs and you can run and you can jog and you can go to work and you have blockages. And every time you're doing that, you're not getting enough circulation. And yet you don't even know that you got a blockage because it's an iceberg. Chest pain is only the tip of the iceberg. So what happens is when there's a blockage and let's say you're walking up a flight of stairs, the first thing is that the lack of circulation is gonna cause what we call diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle. And you're not even gonna know about that. Yes, your heart muscle is not relaxing properly. Maybe you'll get a little bit of shortness of breath when you're walking. So shortness of breath on walking means that yes, you have a blockage. And then you might find that you get a little uh, lightheaded or you start getting chest pains later on. So chest pain is, is a very late event. So majority of the patients when they come to us, it's not that, oh yeah, I've had a heart attack, but I had lots of warnings, you know, for the last few years, I've been getting more and more chest pain. No, they come, they get a heart attack. They're at the hospital, they call 911, they end up there. Or they come in here, I cath them because they're getting some symptoms and they have a tight blockage. Is it but dark? How can I get a 90% blockage overnight? Well, because you don't get the warning signs. If most ischemia is silent, and if myocardial infarctions don't announce themselves and more than 50% of the heart attacks have no previous warning, then what kind of a physical examination or cardiac examination can you undergo ahead of time to know that you are one of those that's gonna get a silent heart attack or that you already have blockages and don't know about it? So what do you do? You go to the cardiologist and we do a stress test on you. So let me explain what a stress test is. A stress test is to see if there's any lack of circulation. But if you look at my previous videos, you'll see that if you have an artery, there's an artery, you have to have a blockage inside that artery of at least 70% before there's lack of circulation. So therefore, you can have a blockage in that artery like this, and you're getting lack of circulation. This is all the plaque build up in here. And you can have lack of circulation going through there only if there's a 70% or more blockage. So you can have 50%, 60%, and there's still plenty of blood going through. So a stress test only picks up blockages that are greater than 70%. Well, the first next question is, don't you want to know if you have a blockage that's less than 70%? Of course you want to know that. Why do you want to wait till you only find out if you have a 70% blockage or more? So the stress test has its value, but only in picking up blockages that are more than 70%. It doesn't tell you whether you have a 30, 40, 50, or 60% blockage. Next question then obviously is, okay, so if I have a 40, 50% blockage, so what if it's not causing lack of circulation? And the answer is this, that when you have an artery with only a minor blockage, let's say a 30 or 40% blockage like this one I'm showing you here, what's wrong with that? It's not restricting blood flow. There's still plenty of blood flow going through there. So what's wrong with that? Well, the problem with that is that it can rupture 
That means there's a crack in the plaque and then a blood clot forms in it. And if the blood clot's a big one, you have no circulation going through and that's called a heart attack. So blockages more than 70 can cause chest pain. But I told you, don't rely on chest pain. The stress test will pick that up. But minor blockages, they crack and they cause a blood clot in it. And if this blood clot is a big one, you're gonna get a heart attack. If it's a moderate one, you're gonna get new onset of unstable angina, as we call it. New onset of chest pain and EKG changes. So plaques that are minor crack. And most heart attacks don't occur because of progressive blockage from 70 to 80 to 90, then 100. Most heart attacks, which are caused by complete blockage, occur at a site of minor blockage that cracks open and a blood clot forms in it. So you went from a minimum blockage one day, able to do anything and everything, to now having a heart attack or having severe chest pain or minimal exertion. So it's, you need to understand what is going on in the arteries and the pathology. Heart attacks are not caused by progressive blockage in the artery. Heart attacks are caused by rupture of the plaque. The rupture of the plaque causes a blood clot to form in it. If the blood clot's a big one, you're getting a heart attack. So you really want to detect lack of circulation, and that you do with the stress test, which we are doing. But how do you find these minimum blockages? How do you find those? that are the ones that are actually your risk of having a heart attack. Because your risk of having a heart attack is related to how much plaque there is. The more plaque in your coronary arteries that are not blocking your artery, is not blocking the flow of the arteries, there's still plenty blood, blood flow going through. But the more plaque, the greater the chance it's gonna crack one day, and when it cracks, it's gonna cause a heart attack. So in order to detect this, this is where your incomplete examination comes in. This is the reason why we do coronary calcium scores. So when you do a CT scan of your heart, looking at coronary calcification, we can find these plaques because these plaques are full of calcium. The plaques, the blockages are full of calcium and that's what you pick up on the CT scan. So it's called a coronary calcium score. And know your score. If you want a complete examination, you have to know your coronary calcium score. If you have zero calcium in your arteries, you don't have blockage. If you don't have blockage, you're obviously gonna pass your stress test, but also there's no plaque. If there's no plaque, you can't crack the plaque and you're not gonna get a clot forming in it. And basically your prognosis is very good. Your chance of having a heart attack is like less than one in, in 100,000. And for the next 10 years, your survival is 99.99%. Now, the more calcium you got in your coronary arteries on the scan, the higher your risk of having a plaque rupture. So why would you want to know that? Because you'd want to know this because you would then do prevention. So the part of the examination is to detect that you have coronary calcium and then look to see what you can do to prevent more buildup of plaque, more buildup of calcium, and also stabilize the plaque that you already have. To stabilize the plaques that you already have, you need a metabolic workup. So part of your incomplete cardiac examination is not looking at coronary calcium, and not looking at your metabolic condition. Because it is your metabolic condition, your metabolism, your physiology that's gonna dictate whether your plaque is gonna crack or not. So I hope I've made myself very clear here that the mechanics, the mechanical obstruction will lead to angina. But the plaques, they are dictated by your physiology, your biochemistry, your metabolism. So there's two steps to the incomplete examination that we need to fill up. Number one, you need to know your coronary calcium score. If you have calcium, you need to know your metabolic condition. What do I mean by metabolic condition? So this is where we do a very thorough evaluation. What is your weight? What is your body mass index? What is your fat composition of your body? Are there inflammatory markers in your body? Because if there's inflammation, you're gonna rupture your plaque. What is your insulin level? because most of these plaques that rupture 
tend to occur in diabetic patients or pre-diabetics who have very high insulin levels. So we actually measure your insulin levels to show you that yes, you may not be a diabetic, but you're a pre-diabetic. And the sad thing is almost 80% of the population have metabolic syndrome. And this is as a result of the lifestyle that we have, together with the foods that we are eating these days, we have metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome is rampant. So we look at your insulin, sugar metabolism, of course, cholesterol, inflammatory markers, sleep apnea, your biotome, which is the bacteria in your gut. And we look at other conditions that you may have, such as connective tissue disease and toxicities that can also lead to plaque formation and plaque rupture. So the traditional risk factors that we used to look at, which is high blood pressure and cholesterol and history of smoking is very incomplete. Your cardiac examination is not complete until you have had a thorough evaluation, which includes coronary calcium and your complete metabolic makeup. Now, if you detect that your met metabolic makeup is abnormal, what can you do about it? There's a lot that can be done. Now I know that the onus then is on you to make those changes. You need to make dietary changes, but there's also supplements, fantastic supplements, but mostly dietary lifestyle changes that have to be made. And we do this in our office to make sure that your metabolic condition changes and goes back to normal. Otherwise, if you have coronary calcium and you're feeling great and you pass your stress test, you're still going to have a heart attack coming down the road. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope you've learned two things. The incomplete examination does not have coronary calcium and does not have your metabolic workup. So look forward to some more videos on this. And if you like it, click the check mark that you really like it and sign up for our channel. Take care.